Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing some technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and we're also going to be covering some important news relating to the Winklevoss's twins proposed a Bitcoin ETF because this was recently rejected in the last 24 hours by the SEC. Now, the Bitcoin ETF that we're talking about in today's video is not the same Bitcoin ETF, the Van Eck Bitcoin ETF that we've been talking about a lot in previous videos, but this still was important for Bitcoin's price action because right after this news dropped, Bitcoin also dropped. It managed to retrace several hundred dollars back from where it was sitting up here around $8,300 down to where it is now around $7,900. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the price action of Bitcoin, doing some technical analysis on Bitcoin, and then we're going to cover this news and talk about what this means for the Van Eck Bitcoin ETF, the big dog, the, the ETF that we're all looking forward to. We're going to be covering all of that and more in today's video. So if you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button, and smashing the notification bell because guys, we do cryptocurrency videos every single day and I wouldn't want you to miss any of them. So let's get Right into it. Bitcoin is currently trading just over $7,900, which is an important price level. Right around $7,900 is going to be a very important level of support, as was $8,000. We'll be discussing that in just a second. But Bitcoin is down about 4% in the last 24 hours. Following this news, this news was most likely a large catalyst for this because this kind of puts a little bit of FUD in the market with people worried that the actual proper Van Eck ETF won't go through. And then of course you have people selling their Bitcoin because they think that this is the ETF that everybody is really excited about when in fact that's not the case. But nevertheless, Bitcoin has dropped a little bit and as such the rest of the cryptocurrency market has also dropped of course. We can see that we do have quite a bit of red here. We see a little bit of green here in VeChain. VeChain is up 17%. But as you can see only about 8 or 9, maybe 10 cryptocurrencies are up, not including Tether, and the rest are down. We do see a bunch of double, we do see not a bunch, but about five double digit uh, losers right here. Ethereum's down 3.68%, uh, XRP is down 3%, BCC or Bitcoin Cash is down about five, EOS down about five, Stellar down about 6.7. Uh, Bitcoin's volume is doing all right still. It has about $5 billion in volume. I'd like to see Bitcoin's volume stay up here because we don't really like how low, uh, how much low liquidity Bitcoin was ha was going through for a time there because it was really kind of contributing to these giant spikes that would just come out of nowhere that you couldn't ever really get a trade in on because they happened in like five nanoseconds. So it's nice to see a little bit more volume coming back into the market that'll kind of stretch the market out a little bit more. What I like to see more is how Bitcoin kind of just gradually trended up here from uh, the 23rd over here up to, until about the 25th where it uh, trended from down here around $7,300 to $8,300. That was much, much easier to trade and especially easier for a beginner. I think there's a lot more beginners coming into the market and they're not really going to be make, able to make any money when Bitcoin is jumping 10% in the span of literally like 15 minutes. It's just not that easy to make a trade on and it's also not that safe. Uh, total cryptocurrency market capitalization is under $300 billion. Again, unfortunately, we did kind of top out at around $300 billion in the last week or so, but you know, I don't really put that much weight on this. It was definitely a bullish sign that was help uh, that was helping to give credence to the bull side when we were above that. Now that we're back below it, I don't really think it's that big a deal. Total cryptocurrency market volume is about 200% uh, more than Bitcoin's at about $15 billion. Total uh, Bitcoin dominance is around 47%. This is interesting because Bitcoin's dominance was starting to go down a little bit and now it's kind of stable. It's kind of stabilized. It's going sideways a little bit, even going back up a little bit after this little drop here. As we can see, it was kind of trending down here just a little bit. If the chart will properly low, there we go. It was trending down here just a little bit. Now it's kind of stabilized and gone up just at like a tenth or two or three tenths of a percent. Not a huge change, nothing to really write home about. Anyway, let's move on to the chart and do some TA on Bitcoin. I have a lot of TA to do in today's video. I hope I'll be able to get through it quickly, but I have a lot of things that I think you guys are going to want to know about that I haven't shown in any videos uh, yet. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and come out here to the day chart. And the first thing I want to talk about is this little retracement here on the daily chart. As we can see, Bitcoin had a very, very good two weeks. As we can see, it just jumped and jumped and jumped. And we only had like one, maybe two red candlesticks and the rest was green. Bitcoin was uh, bringing Green Day back because it just continued to run all the way up. That was a good ban. I'm, I'm sorry that they're gone. But either way, Bitcoin's Green Days are also over for a second anyway. I think it's going to fall and probably, I think it's going to continue to get support here around $7,900. If it doesn't, I'm also looking at uh, levels of support down here around about 7,600 to where it is right now. I think this area of support in between about 7,600, maybe 7,500 and up where we are now is a very strong level of support. And there's very, there's at least three reasons to believe that the level of support we're getting on now is going to hold and I'm going to go ahead and show you them right now. 
The first two reasons relate to the Fibonacci retracement tool. If you bring your Fibonacci tool out here, for any of you guys who are new here, the way you get to Fib on your trading view is to go over here, see this is where your cursor is, that's your trend lines, hit this, it'll have a pitchfork normally, come down here and get Fib retracement. With Fibonacci retracement, if we drag it from the t uh, recent high at 10,000 down here to the recent low, what we're gonna see is that Bitcoin is getting support on the 50% retracement level, which correlates with about $7,900, as you can see right there. So we're getting support over there on that level. That's one of the levels we wanna look at. Fibonacci is used by a lot of people, so therefore it is a very powerful indicator. And it's actually very helpful for uh, finding where levels of support and resistance will be because another uh, level that we got support or resistance at was kind of this level right here. Bitcoin actually managed to bounce off of the 61.8% level on this Fibonacci retracement just a little while ago. So it is an important tool that a lot of people use. If we delete that and then we show another way that you can do Fibonacci, you drag it from the bottom to the recent high, then we'll also see that Bitcoin is getting support on the 26.3% retracement down here to its recent low, which as you can see right here, correlates with the one that we were just looking at from the bigger Fibonacci tool. So that's interesting. Bitcoin's getting a level of support on not one, but two Fibonacci level. So that's nice to see. I'm definitely looking for that to hold. If this level of around 7,800 doesn't hold, I'm okay with it going a bit lower. So long as it stays, it stays above this downtrend, the long-term downtrend, the descending triangle pattern, and we don't drop back into this pattern, I'm okay with Bitcoin retracing down to like $7,600, which would keep it above this level. So long as it stays above that level, I'm perfectly fine with that. And also I would like to stay, I would like it to stay above this uptrend right there. I would like it to stay above that uptrend because that's also another important level of support. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, now, the third level that Bitcoin is getting support on is one that's a little bit harder to see than Fibonacci, but at least you can see it with your naked eye without getting an indicator out. And that would be the level that it's on right now is actually previous support. If we can see right over here, there was previous support here, here, and there's a bit of support there, and there's kind of a bit of resistance here. These two are a little bit far away, but they're close enough that you can consider them in this anyway. And Bitcoin is currently getting support on this level right here. So there is, there is precedent to see why Bitcoin would be getting support right where it is. And I think it's probably going to hold it. Like I've said, I think we're going to hold here because this is a strong level of support, it seems. If we don't hold here, I, what I'm expecting Bitcoin to do is retrace down to about $7,600 down here on one of these trend lines because they cross right about here. And if Bitcoin does break through this, it's probably going to come down and get support on both of those and then bounce. I think the bull market is still in full swing, or at least the bull market is still very much in the cards. I think the rally is still in full swing. And I think we're still going to see good things for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Let's get the RSI out here and let me show you how uh, the RSI is doing now that we've started to cool off a little bit because that's one thing we were concerned about was the RSI. As we can see here, the RSI has started to retrace a little bit and kind of reset down here into safer levels down here around 63%. I'm much happier with the 63 on the RSI than I am with the 77 on the RSI, of course. I like to see that retrace a little bit. All right, I think that's everything we wanted to cover. No, there's one more thing I wanted to cover. I can't remember what it was. It was it was a moving average on the it was a moving average on the weekly chart. That's what it was. I wanted to show you something in relation to the 21 simple moving average and the 20 exponential moving average. Now, I've just noticed this. I don't know how much power this really has, but this is a trend and when you're looking for powerful indicators in markets, one thing that one thing that you can do is you can look for uh, trends that also correlate with price action. So, if you see uh, when Bitcoin gets above a certain moving average, every time it does that, it starts a bull market, then that might be a good moving average to look at. Sorry, there's a mosquito flying around me. Get away, get away from me. I'm trying to make a video. But normally, whenever you see um, an indicator do something like that and you see a market respect an indicator, it's something that you should look at anyway, even if it doesn't have that much precedent. And what we see here is that I normally have the 21 simple uh, moving average, this blue or purple line right here, whatever color that is, I'm colorblind. And then also the exponential moving average right here. And when they cross, that doesn't necessarily mean that anything important is happening. But the last time they crossed where the 20 exponential crossed below the one, uh, the 21 simple uh, moving average here on the weekly chart, then we actually saw Bitcoin continue the, the bear market. I'm not necessarily saying there's a correlation there, but I am also going to point it out because I think it might be important. As we can see, if we come back here in all of 2017, that never happened during the bull market, but during the bear market, they did cross. And right now, as we can see, it looks like they're about to cross again in the next couple of weeks. So that's something I'm going to be looking out for. Like I said, I'm not sure how much weight that has, but I figured I'd go ahead and show it to you anyway. All right. With the technical analysis done, let's go ahead and move on to the news. Now, yesterday, the Winklevoss's twins Bitcoin ETF was actually rejected by the uh, by the SEC. There was a proposal for a Bitcoin ETF by the Winklevoss twins, and it was unfortunately rejected. Now, some people in the Discord server, because we were watching this happen live, we were watching this little uh, cliff dive that Bitcoin did yesterday, 
uh, in real time in the Discord server. So if you guys haven't joined the Discord server, do it the, do so with the link in the pinned comment in the description. But uh, one thing that some people were asking me is, does this actually change anything in relation to the proper Bitcoin ETF that we've been talking about, the ETF proposed by Vanek and SolidX? Um, no, I don't think it changes anything at all because one of the problems that this ETF proposal actually had is that it didn't address some of the problems that the SEC was looking to solve. One of the problems that the SEC was looking uh, to solve is that Bitcoin, they're worried about manipulation in Bitcoin. And one of the things that you can do to curb manipulation uh, fears in Bitcoin in a Bitcoin ETF proposal is you can trade on over-the-counter markets because a lot of the manipulation in Bitcoin is kind of shorter term and it's stuff that's going to happen on uh, exchanges, but on over-the-counter markets, which over-the-counter markets are basically how you can trade Bitcoin off exchange, then there's much less room for manipulation because everything's more out in the open. So you're not going to have anywhere near as, ma as much manipulation in the over-the-counter markets. And the actual e uh, ETF proposed by Vanek and SolidX is actually going to be based on exchanges, or excuse me, is going to be based on the actual is going to be based on uh, over-the-counter markets. So that's one of the concerns that the, that the uh, SEC was having here. The Securities and Exchanges Commission rejected a second attempt by Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, founders of the cryptocurrency exchange Gemini, to list shares of what would uh, be the first ever Bitcoin ETF. Now, like I said, I don't think this has a big actual impact on what's going to happen with that ETF, but the fact that it did actually happen is part of what most likely caused Bitcoin to jump off a cliff here because at the time yesterday when this news broke, Bitcoin was actually in a pennant. It was actually in a triangle consolidation pattern up here, a bull flag, whatever you want to call it. And it looked like it was about to break out of it. And then literally like an hour after we did, this news dropped and then so did Bitcoin. So it, it was kind of weird timing. It was unfortunate timing, but you know what? Uh, coincidences happen. I don't think that was manipulation or anything because that wasn't a very important pattern. But this is definitely something interesting that we want to keep an eye out for because this, this, I think one of the things that people have gotten worried about in the market is that because this Bitcoin ETF has been declined, they're worried that the future Bitcoin ETF, the actual proper one that everybody's looking at, the Vanek one, is going to be declined as well. I don't think they have any correlation though because a lot of the problems that the SEC has had with Bitcoin ETF proposals in the past are helping to be solved by the Vanek one and they weren't really solved by this one. Bitcoin ETFs have been rejected several times by the SEC. This is not the first time, nor will it be the last because there are still several ETFs being proposed. Now to wrap the video up, I want to talk a little bit about the Winklevoss twins because you guys might not know who the Winklevoss twins are. And if you don't, you most certainly should because they're big players in the Bitcoin space. The Winklevoss twins kind of got their start in the early 2000s when they sued Facebook, um, uh, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, the you know the dude worth like 60 billion dollars or however much, because he cl uh, they claimed that he uh, that he stole their idea for a social networking site called Connect You, and that whether or not they were right or not, who cares? But the uh, the point is they got 65 million dollars from that, and with that they actually became venture capitalists, and part of that capital moved into Bitcoin, and they actually claim that they have about one percent of all the Bitcoin in the world. You can see right here they claim to own approximately one percent of all Bitcoin in circulation, and have devised an elaborate system to store their private keys for their assets. But they are venture capitalists, and they do get into the Bitcoin space a lot. They did create Gemini. If you guys are familiar with the cryptocurrency exchange Gemini is a rather large one. You guys probably have heard of it. That's uh, these these are the guys behind it. And this is interesting. I want to show uh, what this is. See more uh, the Winklevoss twins uh, store their crypto fortune. I had heard about this and I forgot what exactly it was. Well, actually, no, it turns out I didn't. I was right. But one of the interesting things about how the Winklevoss twins store their crypto is that they have different parts of the of the private key written down on paper and they store it in different safety deposit boxes all over the world. So the Winklevoss twins, let's see, I think it was in here somewhere. To protect their Bitcoin holdings, the brothers distribute snippets of a printout of their private keys across multiple safe deposit boxes across the United States. So, that I mean, when you have 1% of the world's uh, Bitcoin, you kind of got to protect it in some way. That's a decent enough way to protect it, I guess. If you're not, if you're, um, I, I mean, if I had two, three billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, I might do something similar. But as far as the ETF is concerned, I, like I said, I don't think this actually affects anything relating to the proper ETF that's going to go through. I still think the other one is still going to go through, but it could be a, lot, a little bit of time before that actually does happen. Because one of the things that has also recently happened with that Bitcoin ETF proposal is that it was actually delayed. And the thing is about this is that the SEC can continue to delay this as much as they well not as much as they want but they can delay the actual proposition several times the proper bitcoin etf that we're actually talking about the uh the vanek one they have delayed that in several other bitcoin etf projects but if they continue to delay it that's not really a problem because what i don't want to see happen is for the sec to go ahead and review it in haste and then deny it 
when Bitcoin is in such a fragile position as it is right now. Bitcoin has had a very good last couple of weeks, but the last thing we need is for the SEC to deny the Bitcoin ETF that is caused in decent part anyway, this run up, I would say. So if they're going to deny it, what I would like them to do is wait several months and deny it rather than denying it right now and screwing over the Bitcoin market, because I think this rally was going to happen whether or not this ETF news was happening at all. I think this, I think this kind of event was going to happen whether or not uh, they were going to accept it or whether or not it was even proposed and whether or not there was even this kind of FOMO in the air about a Bitcoin ETF being accepted. But if they do continue to push it off, they can push it off. I forget the exact date. I think they can push it off. Well, I know they can push it off three times. And each time they push it off, they have so many days before they have to accept it or push it off. And they can push it off, I believe, three times. And if they do that, then the latest that they, uh, the latest date that we would see a proposal by an approval by would actually be March the 20th, if I have my information correctly. So they can push it off until way over here. I'm not convinced that that's going to happen. I don't really see why they would need to push it off that long. But if they want to, they can push it off until right there, which is kind of a long way away. And in that time, Bitcoin, I think, will be in a much healthier position and be able to take a blow like a denied ETF in a much stronger and much uh, better way than it can right now. Because if we see the Bitcoin ETF be denied right now, the actual proper one, not this one, the one that actually everybody's excited about, if we see that one get denied right now, Bitcoin's probably going to fall through the floor down here to like $6,000 or $7,000. And I really don't want to see that happen. And I know you guys don't either. But if it happens over here when Bitcoin's up at like 20,000, it falls down to 17,000 or 15,000, big deal, whatever. So that's what my thoughts are on the matter. Tell me in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the matter. Were you... Um were you interested to hear this news about the Winklevoss's twins ETF being denied? This is not the first ETF that they've proposed that has been denied. So it's kind of interesting that they're still getting their feet wet in here. I mean, third time's a charm, maybe. I don't know. Third time lucky. We'll see what happens. They're probably not going to quit trying. The Winklevoss twins have, they are very, very wealthy people. And if they want, if they're going to try and get what they want, they're probably going to get what they want if they keep trying. But tell me in the comment section down below what you think about this. Do you guys think this is a huge news story? Do you think it's kind of a meh news story that doesn't really matter all that much? Do you think that this has any credence or in le and lends any uh, importance to the actual matter of the proper Bitcoin ETF that we've been looking at over the last month or so here on the channel or the last really about two months here or uh, about two months here on the channel? Tell me in the comment section down below what you think of my technical analysis. Also, do you guys think Bitcoin will hold support here around 7000 $900 on these three levels of support that I showed you. I'm interested to hear your opinions as always in the comment section down below. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and join the Discord server. There's a link to do so in the pinned comment and in the description. We have a very, a very, very much, yes, we have a lot of fun over there. I can speak English. We have a lot of fun over there in the Discord server. Probably the reason I can't speak English is because I was speaking Spanish in the Discord server a second ago. But if you guys haven't already, go ahead and join down there. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead, drop a like, hit that subscribe button because we do crypto videos every single day. But like I said, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.